don't make these mistakes when opening a bank account. I know I talk a lot about banks, but I've had more and more clients coming to the US to open bank accounts in person and having issues and contacting me and me having to fix the issues. And I recently just spent two hours at the bank, at Chase Bank, talking to the bankers, trying to figure out stuff, figure out what we can do, trying to open an account. And it was like, you know, my favorite thing to do. I love going to the bank. If you're planning to travel to the US to open a bank account, it is possible. I'm gonna give you tips on how to do it both for personal accounts and for business accounts. And I'm gonna go through exactly what documents you need in all of these situations. So stick to it, we're gonna get through it. I'm gonna start with the easy stuff, the personal bank accounts. So if you're coming to the US from another country to open a bank account, it is possible. And here is what you're going to need. The first thing, your passport. You need some kind of passport document. You need some kind of identification document. Generally, if you're coming from a country, you need a passport anyways, bring your passport. And the second most important thing you need is proof of residential address. I was talking to a colleague of mine and apparently the Patriot Act requires personal accounts to have a residential address. Even if you use like a private mailing address, a private mailbox, like you use my office or something for your personal account, apparently they're going to close the accounts if it's not a business or if it's not a residential address. And Obviously, you know, you can go on Google Maps, you can search an address and you can see if it's business or residential. They have all kinds of systems and technology for verifying that. So even if they open the account with a PMB, a private mailbox, it's uh, it could get automatically closed pretty quickly because you don't have a residential address. So you say, James, I'm not from the US. I don't have a house there. How do I get a residential address? Well, there's a couple of different ways and there's different things I'm gonna be trying myself, which I will let you know. But the first easiest way is to get a phone bill at a family member's house. So if you have a cousin, an uncle, a best friend, a best friend's cousin, a best friend's uncle, you have someone with some kind of address in the US, a house, getting a phone bill for that address generally will work for proof of address. Another great option is a bank statement. If you have another US bank account opened, use that bank statement. If you have a bank statement, not an online bank, it can't be an online bank, unfortunately, but if you have a bank account at like, Bank of America, a personal account with an address on it, you can take that statement to Chase and they'll open you a personal account because like, oh, this is your proof of address. Generally, you don't start with that. You need to, to get that first account. To get that first account, you need some kind of thing. And the bankers at Chase, this is what they're accepting. You're not gonna have any of those. So a utility bill at the bottom, they said they'll accept phone bills. And the lady told me that you can go to, <laughs> you can go to Target and buy a prepaid phone and sign up for it and get a bill like that. I've used Tello for clients in the past. I think it's Tello.com, it's online. I think they have to mail the chip to you though. So you need to have an actual mailing address. So I think you can sign up for a residential address and then a mailing address. And this is also helpful for the business account. So I would recommend you kind of do this anyways, a personal proof of address. The other thing you need that's really important is a, is a banker who will help you. I've said this in other videos, but you might go to the bank and they don't help you because they just don't know what they're doing or they've never worked with a non-resident. They say you need a social security number. Listen, you don't need a social security number. You need a new bank or a new banker. So oftentimes, if you come to a city like Miami where they're used to dealing with non-residents, it's possible and you can do it. Uh, you might have to go to three different Chase banks. You might have to go to two different Bank of Americas. You might have to go to, like, if you try smaller banks. And you can check out the video I just did about ranking the banks. I think that's a, a fun video where I kind of give a lot of insights to my experience with the banks. But you can go to a lot of different banks and try and open accounts. And if you have a proof of address and a passport, you have a pretty good chance to get an account open. But if they say no, keep it moving, go to the next bank. And the same is true for business accounts. And I wanna talk about opening business accounts in person because you need a little bit more documentation, but the accounts are better for doing business. You know, it's just better to have a business account for doing business, especially if you have an LLC. So when you're going to the bank, often you can open both. And I would recommend it if you're there, just open both. As long as you have proof of address at a residential address, you then, you also need some kind of proof of address for a your business as well. They'll usually accept PMB, a private mailbox, or like a virtual, or like a virtual address. Like if you have a, uh, like a WeWork or a co-working space, or if you're a client of mine, we give sub suites to you, to our clients, and we assign sub suites to them so that they can not really, they can have a, a, a custom address, a private mailbox, but it's not like a, a mail delivery service. I have a co-working space here in Texas, and 
I didn't have to sign anything where they're not a certified mail receiver, but they can like collect all the mail. They ass assign subsuites to people, so it's a little less formal. They'll accept those, and I've and I've used the agreements with those agencies to be a business proof of address. Okay, but it's still useful to have a personal proof of address as well, and even for a business account. So I'd still recommend doing that. So back to the business account. When you come to the U.S. and you're going to open your business account, you need passport. Articles of organization. If your company is older, if you didn't open it this year, you'll generally need a good standing certificate, which is something you can generate for free at the Wyoming website or pay $30 or something for a Delaware website. Different states have different things. You don't need it for Florida because they can look up the company. And then we have the EIN letter. You need that IRS EIN letter. If you lost it, you can call them. They can fax you a new one. You'll need the proof of residential address. Not all banks require this. Most do, and it's better to have it. And then you need the proof of the business address, which is going to be whatever agreement you have with your private mail service. Uh, there's different options for setting this up. There's online services. People use virtual postal mail. People use iPostal One. There's like a million companies that do this, but these are commercial companies. There's smaller ones like my company that you can work with that, that isn't like a commercial mail agency, but we do manage the mail for our clients. And I think those agreements are better and it's worked for us uh, with the, with the, uh, with our clients. I think that's it. You need a banker that'll, that'll help you out. So this is the same as the personal accounts. Many bankers don't know what they're doing. They'll say you need a social security number. They'll say your company needs to be registered in our state. And some states do that. If you're going to Texas and you're going to a bunch of Texas banks, half the banks are going to say, you're not registered in Texas. We can't open the account for you. Many cities like Miami, um, major cities are used to having people from other states uh, open bank accounts, but they still can be annoying about it. So it doesn't mean you have to register to do business in that state. It just means you might need to find another bank or another branch. Uh, we've had the best luck with like the major banks, the big banks. But if you have a relationship with a smaller bank and you have the proof of address, it can still be possible to get these accounts opened. Don't make those mistakes when going to... <laughs> When opening a U.S. bank account, the mistake is coming in unprepared without a proof of address. That's the main takeaway from this video is that you generally need some kind of proof of address. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to get a family or friend and we're going to get a phone bill. T-Mobile, Verizon, maybe Google Fi. Those would be the best. Sometimes they're difficult. I, we use Tello for a lot of our clients. And apparently through the Chase people, they said you can just go to Target and buy a prepaid phone and use that. And that works. So these are the options. If you thought this was interesting, I, I love you. You can watch this video about me ranking the banks. I rank like the top 20, 12 banks and I rank them on an A to F or whatever scale. So check that out. It's a fun video.